We're going to go through a few things. We're going to go through networks industry forecast, which um, is, is our forecast. It's not in the industry forecast. It's what we see happening. And for the length of time that we've been collecting data, uh, we're within 3% right now of where we believe it's going to go. Okay? We're going to look at stream rates because it's such a variable thing. And as I've said before, no stream is equal. Okay? Then we're going to go into strategies. And I'm going to give you two artists most of you don't even know. But I'm going to show you how the middle class is rising. Okay? And then we're going to talk about content versus context versus culture. Um, and I might actually pull one more thing in there, and I'll actually start with it. That's not on this slide show, just because I don't want to be conducted. <laughs> Metadata. Okay? Um, even good metadata, for the better part, is only entered once. What's wrong with that? Yeah. Metadata needs to be dynamic. If you have a dance hall video, there's, a, there's the initial metadata for it. You know, tempo, keys, all of the other stuff. There might even be some cultural context to it. You know, using different words in different cultures to describe dance hall. Okay, just like love is not love in every single language. Okay, there's different words for it. So why isn't that with inside your contextual, cultural metadata? But let's say a dance hall artist is now arrested because their political views don't mix. The metadata dynamically changes because the, the videos are now watched for a completely different reason. The SEO is not matching the initial metadata. Metadata needs to be dynamic, and it needs ultimately, what will save the business, it needs to be AI activated. Okay, it should not be human. The initial input should be human. The ultimate use of it should be AI activated. So that's, I, I'm planning a seed of the future because nobody's doing it. No one's doing it. Until people do it, you won't get the value of the voice activation AI that is coming at us like a train. And, you know, this would have been the same train I talked about a decade ago that got everybody pissed off at me, okay? This is coming. If your metadata is static, you're going to lose out within the next three to five years. It needs to be dynamic. So you need to figure out how to make it dynamic, or it's going to be a huge lift. And it's already a mess, so it's just going to get messier if you don't make it artificial intelligence-based, okay? So that's our, our little schedule. And then I'm actually going to show you, just because Chris has decided that we need to look at quadrants, I'm going to show you a streaming quadrant of a bubble map. Okay? And I'll tell you why you need to look at these things. I only decided to do it after, after watching him draw uh, squares and quadrants the whole, you know, the, whole, you know, the whole day. Okay. So here we go. Apple, Spotify, and nobody talks about Amazon. Elephant in the room, very big elephant. You better start talking about it. This is not a two-way race. It's a three-way race, okay? Look at what's happened net users so far this year. And the year's not over yet. 36 million more paying customers. I'm not talking about free. I'm talking about paying, okay? And yes, I've thrown in Deezer, and I've thrown in Tencent, because Tencent in time will be big. Deezer, um, it's a time before it goes away. Deezer will not make this cut. They might make it as a brand partner with certain mobile devices within certain territories, but beyond that, they are no longer a major player within inside the situation. Okay? So this is the whole breakdown. Apple's done a really good job of making you think that they've caught up to Spotify. It decides, you know, you can look at the same Apple and cut it eight different ways. The bottom line is they haven't. And the bottom line is they won't. Because for Europe, it's game over for Apple. They're too late to go in. They're on okay footing with Inside America. 
equal footing with Inside Canada due to certain things that happened with Inside Canada. The, the delay of Apple coming in, the delay of Spotify coming into Canada. Okay? This is where we think it's going to be. Network. We think in literally what? 18 months? Two years? We are going to be at 125 million versus 88, 65 million versus that, 24 million versus, uh, versus that. 93 million more subscribers will be in the system paying by the beginning of 2020. That's our projections, okay? It's not industry projections. We, we don't even look at the industry projections, to be honest with you, okay? So we have been tracking since basically on this graph since June of, two, of 2014. So basically for over four years. Well, streaming's only been around for six, seven years. Okay, so we've got most of the lifespan. This is our own data, our own internal data. So it, it doesn't skew. We get it from very reliable sources. And this is how we see the world. This is where we are right now. And this is how we've grafted out. We're still on immense, immense growth. Pandora is the green one. Flat. Flat. Pandora is trying to make that switch. You know, we haven't changed our data much upon Pandora. We'll see what happens with the sort of purchase that's happened and, and, and whether the, that integration and how it's used. But right now, they are not a player with inside the paid side of the business. Okay? And, you know, we could throw every other service in here, but, you know, 20% of the people that you work with or 80% of your income, that's where we spend our time. The other 80% that don't really pay us a lot, it's a pain in the butt. I mean, our, our average monthly statement that we get from our, through our system is somewhere between two to three million lines of data. That's why I have a very big, well-paid accounting department. Okay? This is just U.S. streaming. So this, is, this you can see Spotify and Apple a lot closer than what you see on the international stage. But you also see Amazon catching up quickly, too. This has a lot to do with voice-activated devices. A lot of that Amazon gain will actually be in the country marketplace and in middle America and with the CEOs of the household, okay? That's Canada. Take a really good look at that because this is something that I don't think there's ever been a study based on what's going to happen in Canada. I can tell you what's going to happen in Canada. That's what's going to happen in Canada, and this is where we are right now. Okay? Now, do you notice something? Apple paid. We, pro we project at some point is going to intersect with Amazon. You also see our curve starting to flatten out. That's based on market maturation. What is market maturation? It means when you hit a certain percentage of the population that are actually using it, and that switch from free to paid. You're never going to be on this forever. At a certain point, a market matures. We might move those forecasts later based on how voice-activated AI is adopted with Inside Canada. We've already moved our metrics with Inside Sweden, Finland, Norway, Denmark, based on we. We don't think the you know, cap is 67% of the population now. We actually think it's 80. So we actually move it a bit based on how, te on how technology is changing behavior. Okay? So there's a lot of factors that we put into actually looking at this. Stream rate per service. Okay. You notice we don't have title in here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're relevant, even though one of my best friends is now running the like company. I still don't think they're relevant. So, 
why do these things move all over the place? Why is an Apple stream worth double a you know, Spotify stream? A lot of it has to do with paid versus free and the territory it's coming from and the currency of that country. I can tell you right now, a stream in Germany takes 10 streams from Brazil to equal a, a you know, stream in Germany. So even though your numbers in Brazil might be more than Germany, your economic value isn't. Do you want to chase the number streams or do you want to chase your, your like economic value when you're setting your strategy? So network sets its strategy based on dollars collected, not on the number of streams. Now by watching every single territory and you like kind of see this, that's like a tab. So on our actual thing, I can look at about 50 different countries on what my team thinks is going to happen. And that affects sometimes where we hire, where we do consulting deals, where we put people on the ground. It informs our overreaching strategy of our company. Okay? So here's Blended. So in the, in the past year, Spotify's rates come down by by 6.5% Apple, and then Amazon uh, Prime has come down. The blended across it is this rate, okay? This, by the way, I believe is in US dollars, okay? So that kind of gives you a sense. So as, as, as I said, an Apple stream is worth double a Spotify stream. But you'll also find that right now, because Spotify is so much bigger, about 70 to 80% of my streams come from Spotify, 20, 25% come from Apple. So economically, Spotify is more than three, four times more valuable to me than what Apple is. Okay? There was a shift when all of the major labels redid their licenses with you know, um, um, Spotify. They, they gave some of that margin back because Spotify needs to become profitable. Any business that gives approximately 70% of its income away to the creative community needs scale to make to profitability. Now, Spotify has been profitable in certain countries for the last three, four years. They lose money because they aggressively go into countries where they're not profitable yet and where most of the initial funnel is free. But every single marketplace matures over time it switches over to 50% paid, and in the case of the Nordics, you're now 70 or 80% paid in certain countries. That's maturation. That's the maturing of the marketplace. The only gain when a marketplace is fully baked, okay? So you have, let's say, 70% of the population, 80% of the people are actually paying a, sub, a subscription. You either raise the price of the subscription or what? You drive the advertising. So there's been this huge argument over Spotify and their advertising model and how it's not fair, blah, 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 blah. Spotify is, it's a great funnel in, it's the Kool-Aid to get them into paying, and it diminishes piracy. The end game is they need the advertising for when a market fully matures. At that point, it's the only upside. No one's talked about this. Economics 101. You know, you would have learned this in the first year of commerce. Okay? That's why they're never going to give up the, you know, you know, the advertising. At the end of the day, in a fully baked marketplace, it's the only room to grow unless you raise your, sub your subscription price. So how's the, how are you paid? It's the amount of money that's generated. Let's just say for the sake of easy math, it's 100 bucks. 70% approximately goes into the creative pot. A little bit of that 70% goes to the like, you know, publishers. Some of it in certain countries goes elsewhere, and then there's what's left to the sort of master rights. Okay? That's then divided by the total number of streams. Okay? Now that pot of hundred dollars, because let's say um, in you know Canada it's about a 50-50. Um, as free versus 
um, paid, that same $100 pot might be $200 in Sweden, where it's 80% paid and only 20% free. So right there, you have the same amount of streams, but the actual pot's bigger because it's paid versus ad-based, okay? So that's one thought. Now, it's consumption. So the number of times someone listens to a song when they pay their $10 or how many songs is going up. So the engagement with inside the music is going up. Voice-activated AI is going to make it go up more. Why? Because I can be chopping the vegetables. Hey, put on some Frank Sinatra, Alexa, and on it comes. Where if I had to put down my knife, go to my smartphone, hook up to my Bluetooth and make it play, chances are I wouldn't do it. I have, you know, one of my, you know, grandmas looking at my old Bose unit, screaming at it to play Barry Manilow, and the Alexa lights up, goes, Barry Manilow. <laughs> and she's still looking at the Bose unit. <laughs> but it worked, because now Barry Manilow is playing, right? There's a reason why my home account is in my wife's name, and my, other, my, and my account, I can't have those algorithms coming in to mess with what I'm looking at. <laughs> so... We're gonna still see that engagement go up. Some of it's gonna be lean back and some of it's gonna be lean in. And lean back is music that's in the background and lean in is music that you're fully engaged with. But by the per user amount of songs being consumed going up, it's gonna push the overall rates down, even though the number of subscriptions is going up. At a certain point, you can only listen to so many songs a month so if these subscriptions start going up, we will see a reverse on that trend and the per stream rate will go up. I don't know when that's gonna happen, but the only thing pushing the stream rates down is the engagement with the music, which in itself is really interesting and a really interesting opportunity, okay? But that's, these are all the different things that decide how much the rate is and the rate is dynamic, it changes every month based on all of these factors, okay? It's never the same. That's why we kind of do an estimation, okay? And our estimations are pretty tight because we actually do it based on real data and real money that comes into our bank account, okay? So it's... Here's the difference, and it's really interesting. Apple, human, Spotify, AI-based. Why is that really important? It's because the Apple model, based on how they're doing it, means if a curator likes a you know, song, it goes on a playlist, chances are six to eight weeks later, it comes off that playlist. It's all about being new. The only bottom you have left is how many saves that song got to go to, to someone else's personal playlist. It's a radio model, it's a download model, it's a horrible model from my perspective. I would rather have my listening habits determine the music that I'm served. So, Spotify is in the middle of making their playlists, most of them, dynamic. So if I'm listening to, let's say, a peaceful piano for the sake of it, my peaceful piano playlist might not be the same as someone right next to me. Because 20 or 30% of that playlist is based on what I, on what I consume. Think about that. The fan becomes in charge of what they're serviced. They're still serviced things that are curated, but we're seeing a, a, an amazing shift and a growth of organic plays, which is very, very crucial to the stability of any artist because those organic plays don't go away, but the curated playlists do go away. They're a one-time hit, they're a one-time fix. And if anybody thinks being on a New Music Friday is, is it, you feel good for one week and then you feel shit afterwards. Because those streams evaporate. And chances are, your save rate on that particular uh, playlist was not good. 
okay? So this is a big thing. And it's just like Apple for the first couple of years, they wouldn't allow you to share your playlists. I had heated conversations with the top down on that one. I said, you, you're treating your audience like teenagers and they don't know better. When has that ever worked in the music business? <laughs> it's reverse. And that's why I think Spotify's had a huge leg up upon Apple because Apple didn't change that behavior until last year. And they're still human curated. Well, well, here's an interesting conversation I had with, with your head of curation. It's like, okay, you won't add this artist. Happened to be an artist from Australia named uh, Malrat. You don't think that she's real? Huh, interesting. I said, do you have any 16-year-old female curators who work at Apple? And he's like, no, we can't do, um, um, do that. Well, guess what? Her audience is 16-year-old females. Of course, a 25-year-old doesn't think it's real because she's not talking to them. I said, her Spotify numbers, she's charting in almost every territory, and you're not even giving it any lift at all. You're losing because of your human curation. Because you can't hire a 16-year-old girl to curate a playlist. They should. they should, but they can't. But that's my whole point, is that within human curation, there's so many flaws to it. They're beautiful flaws, but they're flaws, okay? I would like to decide what music I listen to. I got to bet that almost everybody in that room shares that same opinion, okay? I don't want to listen to Barry Manilow. It's not, it's just, it's like not my thing, okay? So the... Bottom line here, different songs and strategies, I, I will say, will be required to fully activate different streaming services. We're even seeing on the same artist where Apple jumps on one track, Spotify won't. Spotify jumps on a different track, Apple won't. So if you look at these services, and Amazon's a whole other beast. So if you don't combine these together to look at it, you don't get a true picture. And then if you don't strip out the streams and just put in dollars, you don't really get a true picture. Okay? So, this is a huge driver. Spotify radio, I wish they'd found a different word than radio, because it's not radio. It's algorithmic feed pushing to you. Okay? These are the driver. Probably 60% of all Spotify streams now are not curated playlists. Okay? That's big. Because it means if all the curated playlists went away, 60% of your income would still be there. Where in Apple, when it goes away, the bottom falls out of it. 